I want to start off by thanking the Blue Marble Space Institute of Science for the opportunity to talk about my summer research with Dr. Edry at Blue Cycon. So Mars has always been in the spotlight for many space scientists and especially astrobiologists due to its similarity to Earth and is within the habitable zone. So was there life on Mars? Is there still life on Mars? To look for evidence of aliens, we will dig up the past, literally, by sending rovers to collect Martian soil and study them. That brings us to the title of my talk, Mars, uh, Mars in the Subsurface Chamber of Secrets. My name is Minle, and I am a research associate from the Young Scientists program here. And let's start this interesting topic. So today I will talk, uh, walk you through Mars geological history, then Oxyaplanum, the landing site for ExoMars 2022 rover, and life under the surface of Mars. So first, Mars History 101. Mars geologic history is divided into three periods, Noachian, Hesperian, and Amazonian. The Noachian period was between 4.1 to 3 billion years ago, um, roughly half a billion years after Mars formation. This era was during the late heavy bombardment, which results in loss of impact craters on Mars. At this time, the sun's luminosity was about a quarter less than it is today, uh, which would be too cold for liquid water to exist on Mars. However, volcanic eruptions pull gases um, into the Martian atmosphere, creating a greenhouse effect, uh, which warmed the planet enough for possibly rainfall, giving Mars extensive surface water. The system of phyllosilicates from basaltic weathering and valley networks is observed in surfaces around this age, but not in more recent terrain. Large bodies of water, meaning lakes or ocean, even um, or even oceans, formed in many basins and craters. So here are two pictures of uh, deltas in our solar system to show you the similarity in them. The one on the left um, is of an ancient delta in the Jezero crater, which NASA Perseverance rover is exploring right now for signs of fossilized microbial life. The one on the right shows the Mekong Delta from Vietnam, my home country. As you can see, both figures show channels um, and delta deposits and fan-like shapes at the mouth of the rivers. As here. The observation of such a characteristic landform provide clear evidence that, similar to Earth, some valleys on Mars also experience the same type of ongoing flow over time and sedimentary rocks deposited in similar liquid environments. So following the Noachian is the Hesperian period, which was between 3.7 to 3 billion years ago. This was at the end of the late heavy bombardment. So there was a huge decline in meteorites and asteroids impacts. As a result, volcanic activities became the main geologic process on Mars. Mineralogy on the surface changed from clay to sulfate due to the change in the atmosphere by volcanic outgassing. In addition, Catastrophic flooding due to volcanic or tectonic activity formed um, huge outflow channels on the surface, possibly created large icy lakes or oceans. Mars also started transitioning from the wetter and warmer climate into the dry and cold planet we see today in this period. So this figure on the right shows the differences uh, between Noachian and Hesperian um, terrains. So this dashed line separates the two. And as you can see, the Nikin, um has extensive valley networks, while his experience is smoother due to the lava flows. Last but not least is the Amazonian period, which was 3 billion years ago to the present day, showing the dry and cold Mars that we are very familiar with today. This period is characterized by the absence of large scale geological and climatic changes due to the low rates of impacts, volcanic and tectonic activities, Aeolian processes, such as winds with some ongoing volcanic eruptions, have received large areas of Mars, causing the Amazonian to cover at least half of the Martian history. Now we move to Oxyaplanum, a place of interest to the ExoMars 2022 rover. So Oxyaplanum is a region in the northern hemisphere of Mars that lies east of Christ Planitia. This region is thought to be formed during the Noachian period. Um, the birth of many valleys networks. During this time, the deposition and alteration of the layer clay bearing formation occurred. The delta fans and larger bodies were, of water were formed later in the Noachian era. 
followed by the Hesperian period, characterized by vocal, um, global volcanic and erosional activities, as mentioned before, have to deposit a thin layer unit that overlies the clay bearing unit, which helps preserve the clay below. Then later, the Amazonian period lava flows deposited the dark resistant unit, which is a dark tone unit that lies on top of other units and is also resistant to erosion. And the ongoing erosion reveals a new underlying um, clay bearing materials. So why axia blenum? Aside from being relatively easy to blend on, because uh, it's flat, uh, oxia blandum, as I just discussed, is very old, giving it a rich record of Mars geological history, especially the era where liquid water was present. Philosilicates, which include clay, may hold in important information regarding the origin of life. In addition, clay has been suggested to be vital in preserving buried organic material. Oxia blenum is also covered in a volcanic layer, some of which has been eroded, revealing the clay below. This volcanic layer um, reserved the subsurface of oxia blenum, making it possible to study mineralogy from the past. So the figure at the bottom shows a close-up of uh, oxia blenum. You can see some impact craters in the region. And the one on the right shows um, the landing ellipses of ExoMars and the different clay-rich layers exposed at oxia blenum. You can clearly see the layers here. And I want to quickly discuss the current and upcoming rover missions on the planet. What makes ExoMars uh, different from Percy, uh, Perseverance? Um, both rovers focus on searching for the biosignature on the red planet with Perseverance at the Jezero crater and ExoMars at Oxia Blenum. One of the main differences uh, is the depth at which the rover will dig into Mars. ExoMars withdrew two meters deep into Mars, a vast difference from Percy five centimeters. This will allow us to study the different layers of Mars in its history. Lastly, we will take a look at the possibility of life under the surface. So among the many theories um, regarding the origin of life, one of them was from Stephen Banner, who theorized that life was created on Mars and transported to meteorites on Earth. He reasoned that Mars was the, at the most appropriate spot for life to form and the, has the best circumstances for RNA formation. In addition, the existence of liquid water on Mars suggested that there was a period where life as we know it could thrive. And that takes me to this meme. Um, life on Mars was most likely in the form of microorganisms, not some crazy cool looking aliens we see in the movies. Sadly, <laughs> the most likely microorganisms that could survive on Mars are specific microbes known as extremophiles. These are microorganisms that can endure extreme conditions and even thrive in them. Extremophiles can have many types. Um, here are some of the extremophiles that might survive on Mars, and I'll leave list three of them because due to the time constraints. The psychophiles can survive very cold conditions, making it possible to thrive in the late Hesperian and Amazonian periods. Radiophiles can survive in high level of radiation environments such as violet. So they can survive on the current Mars if they still exist or was, um, was, uh, was there in the first place. And last on my list is the serophiles, a microorganism that can survive in really dry environments. It is believed that this ability allows um, for, for organisms to survive vacuums and radiation exposures, of which are the characteristics of current Mars. And here is a little summary of what I discussed today. Um, so I walk you through the geological history of Mars from Noikian to Amazonian uh, in a brief discussion of Oxia Blandum and its evolution. And just now, um, the possibility of life on Mars, which include the theory of origin of life, the fact that Mars has the right conditions for life in the past, and what type of life can exist on Mars, which are stream of ours. Um, thank you so much for listening to my presentation and please let me know if you have any questions. I'm going to go back to the summaries in case you can, you need anything. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Excellent talk, Min. Uh, are there any questions from our audience? I see some claps coming in in reactions. Uh, you can ask uh, questions in the chat or raise your hand.
I see Sanjoy has a question right away. Hey, man, a very interesting talk. Thank you very much. I find Marv yeah. so intuitive yet so confusing because he recognized the features, but yet how did they get there in, in over geological history is very confusing to me. Um, yep. if, you, if you had to send a rover on Mars, where would you drill? Oh, that is a good question. I'm not very familiar with Mars uh, per se, because this is the first research project that I'm actually focused on Mars. I usually uh, work on stars um, back in undergrad. So, um, but I'm not sure if like, there are many rovers um, exploring the ice cap of Mars right now, but I think that would be an interesting uh, place to drill into. Very cool. I just had um, Alfonso de Villa on Ask an Astrobiologist. Alfonso has a very recent paper where he talks about this potential for life to originate on Mars and then come to Earth uh, mm -hmm. or vice versa and, and what that might mean in our search for life detection on Mars. Um, from your perspective, say we find something on Mars that looks like life and okay. not only looks like life, but it looks like Earth life. Okay. Um, how, how do you think we should then move about testing whether or not life started on Mars and came to Earth or whether or not this is this is life that was ejected from Earth and went to Mars instead? That is a very good question. Hmm. I guess we can maybe like dig up, I don't know. Hmm see how it, like, uh, the life on Mars evolved through time, maybe like theorize it and see if it's like, um, if they, I guess if they don't really evolve that much, then maybe it was originate from Mars. I'm not a biologist, so that's the best I could come up with. <laughs> no worries, it's a great answer. Uh, thank thank you. you very much for the talk.